can be a fantastic tool for taking your upper body strength and your upper body hypertrophy to the next level. Personally, since I started doing push-ups again, I've actually added about two inches to my upper body circumference. As of this morning, my chest is about What's up guys, Alec on Carrie here, and I've been doing a lot of push-ups these past few months, which prior to this past year was regrettably an exercise that I had ignored for quite some time. And that was a big, big mistake. I should not have ever allowed myself to get into the mindset of thinking that I was too good for push-ups just because I have high levels of relative strength or I can bench press 315 pounds or whatever. Regardless of how much weight you can bench press, there is always a reason to include push-ups in your training routine and to make them a staple. And just to make sure that you guys never forget that lesson like I once did, today I'm gonna to give you guys my top three reasons why the push-up is better than the bench press. So let's get to it. When performing a push-up, you're essentially assuming a plank position for the entire set. The core and the hips must be locked in and they must be stable in order to keep the body in a rigid line during the movement. And as you repeatedly descend to the bottom of the push-up and then ascend back up to the top, this positioning, maintaining this positioning is challenged. Maintaining a strong, solid brace here can actually become very, very difficult as you fatigue and as the reps take longer to get through as well. If you're doing weighted push-ups here, then this effect becomes much, much more pronounced as any external weight that you add onto your back is directly working against your core as you fight to maintain that rigid body position and prevent your hips from sagging or your lower back from arching into extension. This effect is what's known as anti-extension and it's one of the primary functions of the core musculature to prevent the spine from buckling and being pushed into a hyperextended position where your lower back bends like that. And training this function concurrently with your upper body actually makes push-ups one of the most functional upper body strength builders out there. Think of it this way. It doesn't much matter if you can bench press 400 pounds if your core muscles, your abs and your hips and your back, your lats, everything in your torso can't also resist that force. When you push something in real life, you're standing up. And that means that in order for you to come close to producing the force that you can produce during a bench press, your hips and your back and your abs must also be able to resist that force. And if they can't resist it, then the nervous system is simply going to dampen that force production so that you don't accidentally hurt yourself. And so unlike the bench press, the push-up gives you the opportunity to train both of these things concurrently, which ensures that neither aspect will ever lag behind. So then you can rest easy knowing that not only is your body going to be more resilient and more functional overall, but also that the strength that you're building in your upper body is going to be highly transferable to many other activities beyond simply the bench press itself. The push-up takes place in a closed kinetic chain, which in this case means that the hands are anchored to the floor and can't move during the exercise. And the bulk of the movement takes place by moving the body, by moving the torso through space. Now contrast this with the bench press, which is an open chain exercise. And here, the body is fixed against the bench while the limbs move freely. Now the difference here is that during a bench press, the shoulder blades, the scapula, are pinned down against the bench, typically in a retracted position. And they can't move during the set. They are pinned against the bench. Whereas with a push-up, the shoulder blades aren't pinned to anything. They're hanging out in the air and they can move freely during performance of that exercise. And this allows the scapula to both retract and protract and move about freely against the rib cage as you move from the top of the rep to the bottom of the rep. And this actually confers several very important benefits. For one thing, it actually allows the serratus anterior muscle, which is a muscle right around here on the front of the rib cage, to join into the party, which is impossible during a bench press because the serratus anterior primarily engages when the scapula protracts. It's even been nicknamed the quote boxer's muscle because it's largely responsible for the protraction that occurs 
when throwing a punch. And that can greatly bolster punching power and training that muscle can help enhance punching power. Additionally, this dynamic movement, this scapular freedom is simply a more natural way of utilizing the shoulders and pressing things in general, whether off the chest or overhead. It forces more muscles to become involved in the exercise and it preserves and reinforces that natural scapular movement that takes place during activities which require significant movement of the humerus, the upper arm. And strengthening and reinforcing this natural pattern can actually go a long way towards creating more resilient and overall stronger shoulders. Whereas the problem with the bench press is that it forces you to keep the shoulder blades pinned in retraction on the bench, like I mentioned earlier. And so if that's all you do, if that's all you ever train, then eventually this natural scapular movement will be lost. And this in part explains why so many people have issues with the overhead press, for example. If you don't know how to properly move your scapula, if the scapula doesn't move properly, then it's not going to elevate properly during an overhead press. And if the scapula doesn't elevate as the arms move up overhead, then you risk getting impingement at the shoulder joint, which can lead to inflammation and can lead to pain and can possibly even lead to tears. So because of this, it's incredibly important to learn how to hold the barbell in the proper overhead slot position, which not a lot of people outside of Olympic weightlifters know how to do. As well, this is the same reason why it's so important to allow the shoulder blades to protract at the bottom of rowing exercises as well. And this can be very tricky to do during freestanding rowing variations because you're already having to maintain a hinged position while supporting all that weight in your arms and keeping a neutral spine throughout the set. So I'm not a huge stickler for it there. I just kind of consider that to be the same boat as the bench press. There's not much you can do about it. But when it comes to variants like the inverted row or a seated row, it's actually super, super easy to allow the scapula to retract in the finished position, but then also to fully protract in the bottom position of the row. So there's no excuse to shortchange yourself of that benefit during those particular exercises. And the final reason why the push-up is superior to the bench press is easy fucking training volume. Push-ups just don't beat you up like the bench press does. Even when you go heavy, they don't tax the nervous system in quite the same way as a heavy bench press or even a moderately heavy bench press does. And I can't quite explain why that is, but it's something that I can just feel intuitively. And as such, because of that, Push-ups can actually be done for very high volumes or even very high frequencies. But the point is they allow for large amounts of high quality, easily recoverable work to be performed. As Dr. Mike Israel would say, the stimulus to fatigue ratio is very, very favorable here with this exercise, which means it can be a fantastic tool for taking your upper body strength and your upper body hypertrophy to the next level. Personally, since I started doing push-ups again, I've actually added about two inches to my upper body circumference. As of this morning, my chest is about 44 inches around, whereas just about a year ago, it was only about 42 inches around. I've been doing close grip push-ups, wider grip push-ups, feet elevated push-ups, push-ups with a pause in the bottom, push-ups with no pause in the bottom, push-ups where you deload the chest onto the floor with every rep, shorter range of motion push-ups, longer range of motion push-ups, heavy push-ups, very heavy push-ups, and super light push-ups for very high total rep counts, etc. So I've been doing a lot of different kinds of push-ups and I've done a hell of a lot of total training volume this past year. I've logged a shitload of reps and honestly, I think that the results speak for themselves at this point. So there you have it, three big benefits that you cannot get from the bench press alone that actually make the push-up superior to the bench press in many respects. And these three benefits alone are more than enough reason to make sure that you treat this classic exercise with the respect that it deserves and make it a staple in your upper body training routine for the foreseeable future. And that's all I got for today, guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. If you're interested in online coaching, be sure to shoot me an email at onkiri.elite at gmail.com and I'd be happy to pass some more information your way. Or simply visit my website, www.onkiri.elitefitness.com for more details. Keep training hard and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>